Let's get one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's get Terry more in there. Good morning. Good morning, girls. Good morning. It's, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday table day. I think yes. I like the table day more than the panel day. That's a good way to say it. Right? Yeah. Well, I think Terry, you oh, said yeah. that in a text table. that you sent me. Table. Table talk. Table talk. <laughs> sweater weather. <laughs> Sweater weather. Like I'm sweater sweater weather. Today is sweater weather. <laughs> sweater weather. On account of the rain and coziness, though. It yes. really is. It really is sweater weather. It's perfect that's, that we're that's our about. coping mechanism. It's yeah. cozy. Yes. <laughs> we're talking about Noah, so it's perfect. This it's is true. Right. This is true. Hopefully it'll stop before however many years the rain. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like, girl, no, it's not stopping here because fall is fall fall came and then all of a sudden fall's gone. It was yes. snowing yesterday. Mm -hmm. Fall is so short and it's my favorite. Mm -hmm. And I get really upset. Do y'all get upset? Like, we had it for a day. I know. Yeah. It'll be back. It'll come back. It's going to be 70. Yeah, yeah. 70 and sunny. When? I don't know. This weekend. Oh, yes. Well, yes, yes. Speaking of this weekend, I, a week from Friday, my son Shay is coming home. And mm. I am, a, I, I can't even barely sleep at night when I think about it. I just cannot wait to just wrap my arms around him again. He's been gone in Arizona yeah, since mm -hmm. I think it's only been maybe seven or eight weeks now, yeah. but it feels, like, break? it feels like a lifetime. No, he's just coming home um, okay. to go to a Michigan State game with oh, some friends. Fun. So oh. I'm not sure how much I'm going to see of him, but I'm like, as long as I get to see you and just hug you for a moment, we're good. Yes. Oh, man, that is so fun. Right? To, oh, to right? see him. Yes. I know it. And Terry, so, last night you were here in your workshop, yes. codependent workshop. Yep. And uh, I asked Tara how it went, and uh, just the look on her face, and I was like, oh, boy, miracles happened last night. God was in the house again, of course, yep. revealing and exposing yep. and healing. Yes. Mm -hmm. We were talking about forgiveness, receiving forgiveness from God, and then being able to give forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me think it's, you know, it, it goes along with what we're talking about today, because how do you live well in a culture that is so messed up? And, and Noah did that Noah somehow. Did that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he wasn't perfect, but he did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can do that too. Yeah. And how I, I, I'm very tender today because I just realized mm -hmm. that forgiveness is such a, the oil of forgiveness mm -hmm. is the key to freedom. When wow. we can live receiving forgiveness and readily giving it, <laughs> yep. we can live in a society where people are not the enemy, we know that the devil is the enemy. Yeah. And we can we can be filled to the measure with the love and the grace and the forgiveness of God. So when we walk through the world, it doesn't have to take us out all the time. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so Gosh. I am I am filled to the measure from last night and just the stories of these women who are brave and mm. Brave is the right word. Brave, and they're doing it, and they're. It's not easy. No, no. And they're shaken when they're sharing their stories, but they're doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of it. So next week is our last week, um, mm. and then hopefully we're planning on doing the healed and set free workshop for men in the winter. Oh my gosh. So I'm hoping that we have some I've had a men. lot of requests oh, for that so recently. Many, yeah, so many women writing in about their husbands too. That want yeah, it, and it, it is not seeking. a female. This it's no, not no, a female journey no, at all. No. Mm -hmm. But I get it why men don't. It's just awkward for men to be in there with women when we're talking yes. about this stuff. Agreed. Agreed. And so to have a place, my husband's going to do it with me. Yeah. And um, I'm looking forward to that. So, oh, and, uh, so many are forgiveness from others for others and for ourselves. Yes, Amen. that is huge. Yes. I wow. There was a woman that I was talking to recently, and I was thinking about her listening to your curriculum. By the way, I've done Terry's curriculum twice, and I get to hear <laughs> of it all the time. And it is it was it's always been so fun to sit in mm -hmm. because you see the faces of the women, all all of us, me too, just lighting up and yet tears, just mm -hmm. break breakthrough, mm -hmm. yes. chains breaking. Yeah, but I, I talked to the woman recently who um just will not I she feels like she'll never be able to forgive herself. Mm -hmm. And I think of her all the time mm -hmm. when I was listening to you and I when mm -hmm. I read what I read, that we can forgive ourselves. That's yeah. it's there, yeah, there's mm -hmm. so much forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So well, and that's why we need to know. We need to know God and we need to know what he's like. Yeah, that's because right. when we when we really get to know him, we know that he would never 
It doesn't glorify it him. Is. It's not from him. Right. It's from the pit of hell. That's right. It is all the enemy. Right. And so when we know him, right. then we can begin to, okay, I'm going to trust this right. a little bit. I'm going to trust that I can forgive myself a little bit because mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. I know what he's like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whew. Okay, so there's so much I could even say to that, but I'm resisting because <laughs> we're not even into the subject mm -hmm. that we're getting into, but I think this all plays into that. Mm -hmm. So thank you both for being with us today. This is one of my favorite days of the week. They're all my favorite days of the week, but oh, each, is each one is so unique. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. got its own little right. DNA spin mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're new, welcome. If you've been with us each 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 day, each week, each Wednesday, um, we just love having you do this with us. We've got um, Terry Miller, we've got Marlo Rutz and myself, mm -hmm. Joy, and we're going to be talking today on Noah's Ark. That's Noah's what I meant architect. about it stopping the rain. I said, I hope the rain stops eventually. Oh, yeah, like in the, in, in the case it's of taking Noah. me a minute. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> right. But what a, what a great yes. story that we parked our heart on all week. We're not done. We got one more day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I just love this new for format of being able to stay in the same story mm -hmm. and yet see it from different perspectives yes. and different angles. Mm -hmm and um, be able to share that with every one of you. So I, yeah. I pray that you're all growing too and you're all healing and transforming from these very real stories um, that God is making applicable to our everyday life today. And not just applicable, like transformational mm -hmm. in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about God's word, right? Mm -hmm. Anything else before we get right in and pray? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, real quick, I will share, I just want to tell everyone that we've got a new mama's group starting here at the oh barn, which I'm so excited about. I think yeah. it's called Lilies and Sparrows. Oh my goodness. And um, uh, Amber, who was with us last week, mm -hmm. her and, and a number of other young mamas are starting this up. It's going to be a safe place. It's going to be right here at the barn grounds. Bring your children. The sign up is on the 21st. I believe it starts on the 26th, I think, whatever that Thursday is. Uh, but Danelle or Sue will put that in there if I'm wrong on that. And um, so if you know of anybody and you, you want to be part of this, I would say join, be part of this new guinea pig group that is going to be just amazing. I wish I would have had this. I was this. just thinking yeah. that. I wish mm -hmm. I would have. That would have been incredible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. I went to anything I could find at that point. Yeah. Went to community Bible study. <laughs> me <and> too. <laughs> you gotta take my kids. Take get, them. Yeah, yeah. Take my kids and let me sit for an hour. <laughs> I never had kids that would let me do that. That's why this would have worked for me because they're they're in the same building. The moms will be upstairs. The kids will be here in the barn. But um, my 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 kids never let me leave them. So I ended mm. up working in the children's ministry and all that stuff. It was all meant mm. to be but perfect. Attached, yeah, just a little yeah. attached. <laughs> It's probably more me attached to them. <laughs> That's probably what it was. That's what it was. Um, but it, I'm so grateful to be here with every one of you. Love it. And Love it. Uh, this, this, what today's dialogue is going to be, I had felt it in my bones. I was telling the girls, this is going to be a great conversation. So I would encourage you to get your Bible. We're in, we're in Genesis 6 through 9. We're in the story of Noah's Ark. Start to read it on your own if you can. Maybe just that quiet time. It's a fascinating story. And um, it's a story that you're going to understand and relate to. Uh, and then walk along with us on that. And um, also um, grab your journal, your favorite pen, and write, that, qu write the, that question on the top of the journal that we start with every day is, who are you, God, and what are you like? So that at the end of this hour, you can start to answer that question more um, with certainty. And he's going to want to reveal, and he is going to reveal, and giving us ears to hear what it is that he's wanting to share with us about his character and his faithfulness and his enoughness in our life through the story of Noah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else before we dive right in? I mean, listen, I could stay here for an hour and ask about your personal life, and, and mm -hmm. I know they all want to know it too. Yeah. But then we don't have as much time yeah. for, our, for our main man, Noah. Well, I, right. I do have a brief question. Yeah. Um, and it goes along with what we're doing. I'm just, I just am wondering, have, have you guys watched The Chosen? The new one? Yeah, all of it. No, but the stuff that's oh, been yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just watching that again. Mm. I, I thought the third season was out, so we were looking for it, it and it wasn't yet. So we oh, were, okay. we were re listening. But I was listening to the one where, and I think we watched it on Monday, and I told Joy when I got here, I don't know what today is going to look like because. Tears have just I, been underneath the surface. I see them in your eyes ah, so, they, uh, the whole time. Just so tender yes. this week. but And it was this episode oh. where John was writing John. And he's trying to figure out, he's taken everybody's stories. And I just love the practicality of that. Yeah. Like, what did it look like? It didn't right. look, it was like normal. It mm -hmm. was like normal people figuring it out, yep. even though it was supernatural too. Mm hmm and he's trying to figure out how to how to write it and how to start it. Where should I start? I feel like I should go back. 
And, you know, you mm-hmm. know, it's in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the rest of it, but he it's so I love the beginning of John. And then it's at the end of the episode, it shows um, John gets to go with Jesus to pick out what he's going to read in the temple, hmm. which is creative liberty. But I love that because it's like there are things that happened to prompt things to happen. Amen. And so John picks out Genesis. And so so the ending of it, it's so powerful. The ending of it is Jesus reading in the beginning. Hmm. And then <laughs> then it right then it see, you see John writing in the beginning was the word and he knows that he's the word. And it's and he's reading from Genesis and then it goes to John. Wow. And it's like, ah, oh, it was just so gorgeous and really just kind yeah. of ties together what you and Carrie were talking about yesterday with yeah. yes. Jesus fulfilling the yes. Old Testament and how the words that he said came from this and and just how it's all so woven together so beautifully. And so it was just so, I'll use your word, gorgeous. So gorgeous. <laughs> Um, I but so I, just, I so I just your tears. So I just want to recommend, right there. like, if you haven't watched The Chosen, yeah, watch it because I know some people watch it and they're like, I don't like it that he's funny, or I don't like it that they put, you know. And I'm like, just, just let it be, just let it be, yeah, and see what God wants to okay. show you. I agree. Because there are these tender gems mm-hmm. that that God will use to speak to our lives, and so I don't. That's a commercial for The Chosen. I don't know why. Felt prompted to share that, but it's certainly ministered to me this week. Well, because I think it ministers to every heart that watches it. You know, I think I think that show is is so extraordinarily extraordinarily anointed that it allows us to see Jesus in a real way, in a way that maybe sometimes when you read about the stories, you don't really see the four D ness to it, mm-hmm. and it brings it to life, and mm-hmm. it, we realize that they actually had humor and personalities mm-hmm. and temperaments mm-hmm. and disagreements, mm-hmm. just and they dealt with exactly what we dealt with. I love that show. So I'm mm-hmm. so grateful that you promoted it. Mm-hmm. I love that he's funny. I love that it, it, it brings it it brings it to Jesus life. Yeah, funny, I do too. Mm-hmm. Agree. Agree. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited to get into Noah and um, and to hear from you two as well, what the Lord's placed on your heart. So uh, did you say you wanted to pray? Oh, Carlo? I'd love to. Yes. Okay. yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Father God, first, first stop always. Thank you so much. Gratitude. Thank you for this day. Thank you for these friends. Thank you for everybody that's joining us from wherever, whenever. Most of all, thank you for your word, your stories, the weave, the woven stories, your truth all throughout the word, Mm -hmm. that it just continues to just illuminate off the pages Mm -hmm. how it's all so sophisticated. It's so sophisticated in the the construction. I know we're going to talk about some, some construction today the way that you constructed the word, that Jesus is woven through it all, Mm -hmm. your word, your promises, your uh, gentleness for all of us. Just be with us as um, you you give us the words to um, glorify you Mm -hmm. and everything that we have to say today, that your word will shine brightly Mm -hmm. and speak to whoever's heart it's supposed to to speak to. I wanted to pray over also uh, all the people that are... um, that are, are suffering uh, from cancer. I don't know who, who uh-huh. needs to hear this right now, but it is breast cancer awareness. So uh-huh. just praying over women um, who have been given a diagnosis, who have lost somebody to breast cancer, uh-huh. uh, who is a survivor, any any cancer, just shining a light on that. You put that on my heart driving in this morning. So uh-huh. we love you. We honor you. We praise you in every bit. That's why we're here. And uh, we glorify you and pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay, okay, so let's get right in. Like I said, we're in Genesis 6, 7, 8, 9. It's chunky. It's meaty. It's transformational. That's going to be a good conversation. I, I have to ask you guys, though, to start off. All right. Because you're okay. talking about, okay, you're going to talk about the practicality of, of it, of the Bible, the story. And I just have to ask you guys, Did I mean, you can't help but talk about the elephant or two elephants, <laughs> in this case, in the room, where can you imagine, first of all, his wife... <laughs> And her her perspective in this, I mean, you know, she she's he's been called to build this ark, and she has to be thinking, okay, 
okay, Noah, I mean, you know, I was planning on doing pickleball or whatever it is, and now we're going to do this. But just from her perspective, pickleball. can you imagine they're laying in bed and there's like, there's hippos laying on the bed and she's like, everybody off, 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 or <laughs> go, go, go. This is my bed. What is the off, off, off? We know how diesel is. Can you imagine two know, diesels? Right? Like, yeah. And just for him going to the breakfast table and there's a, a llama reading his newspaper with his legs crossed. I mean, I can just only imagine from her perspective, but talk about, I know we're going to be talking about obedience. I mean, you have to look at, at it from her perspective. Like, where'd you get this notion? First of all, and then she's going to join him so no, obediently. That's so we have life to give, of the year right there. We yeah. have to give her. We don't give her enough credit. Yeah, really. We have to give her credit. Yes. I know. Do we so know I, her name? I know. I was, I was it's just not Mrs. Noah. Noah. I wrote it as Mrs. Mrs. Noah. It's Mrs. Saint. Yeah. It, it it is. Is. We know the kids' names, but. Yes, all the clean and the unclean animals trying to live together. They're like, look, if we're sharing a room, you know, you're going to clean your stuff up. I'm not living in a pigsty. But anyway, I, I read the Bible and I, I have such a reverence. You know, I read it with such respect. Um, all of his, his word and all that's just illuminating. But I also see, I sit there and chuckle. If somebody were watching me, I'd be giggling because there are some really funny little things that you can land on. They're really I, I, it just brings me joy. So. I don't, you didn't see that? You didn't uh, see the llama? You know, I didn't the llama now. see the llama. With the permed hair? Just, <laughs> that's what I saw. That's so. why I'm friends with you, because I need to see the llama. <laughs> right. But I don't. <laughs> I what, just love What it. did you see, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did not see that. I love that. Uh, like, what if she was allergic to cats? It's just going to keep going. She's, gonna, she's itching. Okay, so anywho, on and on. That's I what I saw. I saw allergic. that. What if she was allergic? I know. But anywho. I know. Well, you know, my question was, um, why Noah? Mm -hmm. And so I began to just kind of look at, you know, the story. And there's there's several reasons why Noah. And I loved the story or the point that um, you and Carrie brought up. Actually, Carrie brought it up yesterday about when it was talking about the generation of Noah I believe that was the word. It yep. was the generation. Yep. And that it literally meant the DNA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there's, this is not, you know, we put it on our nursery walls, the picture <laughs> of the ark with the rainbow. And it's not, it's, it's kind of a gruesome, yeah. confusing, yeah. big story. Yeah. Because when you read before it, you got the Nephilim and what the heck is that? Right. And you got, and you have the part that she brought into it, which was the man with animals. I mean, the level of depravity, I don't even think we understand. Mm -hmm. So I liked it that she brought it up because the level of, you know, because you can look at the story and you can go, well, you know, I, when I, I want to know about God. Mm -hmm. And I look at the story and I go, I don't know that I like God. Mm -hmm. Because a God that would create everybody and then kill them all. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I can serve that God, hmm. but if we can, if we can, cause that's hard. Yeah. But let's, let's look at what it says and try to piece together. Right. That, that the Jesus had to come through a line mm -hmm. and if he couldn't come through that mangled DNA line. Yeah. And I didn't think about that until yeah. she was talking about that yesterday. And so it was his grace yep. that prompted this whole story, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like a grace story, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so why Noah? Um, and one, I, I liked it that she mentioned that, you know, his generation, his DNA was preserved and that that would be the line. She didn't say this, but I'm thinking further down the road. G Jesus has to come from a line mm -hmm. that is pure. Mm -hmm at least in humanity, mm -hmm. DNA. Um, so I thought that that was a, an interesting point and that in order for us to be like Noah in his obedience, his wholeheartedness, his fellowship with God, our spiritual DNA needs to be changed. And so when we expect people who do not know the Lord, who have not made Jesus their savior, we expect them to live like people who have had their DNA, their spiritual DNA changed. Mm. The reason we are in fellowship with Jesus, with the Father, is because of Jesus, because our spiritual DNA has been modified, <laughs> has been made right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's like that. we were like those people, 
that it got messed up. Mm -hmm. And now we can be like Noah, who was the pure line. Mm -hmm. And because of Jesus, you know, uh, we can we can live in that. So so thinking about who is Noah first, you know, the genetically, I loved that point. I yeah. thought that that was important. I agree. <clears throat> because it I even though agree. God was broken, it says in my NIV or no, NLT that he was broke. God was broken hearted. Mm -hmm. You know that this this broke God's heart and it's hard for us to at least it's hard for me. I have to ne negotiate through that because he knows everything. He knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And yet when he sees what man chooses to do, it breaks his heart. Yeah. And so for us, we have to navigate the reality of that. Mm -hmm. And that's when I don't understand when it doesn't all add up for me. That's when I have to say, you know, teach me your ways. I need to know who you are because I don't have all of the missing pieces, mm -hmm. but I know you're good. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have great reasons in love towards us for mm -hmm. everything you do. Mm -hmm. So even this hard picture of, you know, people banging on the door mm -hmm. <laughs> that can't get in. Mm -hmm. yes. And we look at that and we're like, mm, I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. what to do with God. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we need to have the, we need to allow him to reveal himself to yes. us and, and to trust that this is a faith walk we're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. I have faith that I don't have to have all of the understanding in order to obey him, mm -hmm. love him, serve him, live mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. Because if I did, I never could. Right. And I think that's where, if I can say for a moment, that's that's the whole story of Noah. He had this he had this deep, unshakable faith that enabled him to do what it is that God commissioned him to do, regardless of regardless of the opinions of other people around him. You know, it took I think it took about a hundred years to build this ark. Mm -hmm. So for a hundred years, he lost friendships. For a hundred years, he was talked about behind his back. For a hundred years, he had to watch his children uh, lose friendships because his dad is wackadoo because you're helping your dad. For a hundred years, family members that he wanted to be mm -hmm. part of his life were wanted nothing to do with him. And yet he kept walking with God. He kept having this faith with God. And the walking, the walking with God is that intimacy. He kept bringing his pain and bringing his heartache and bringing this rejection and bringing this betrayal that we all have experienced but Noah is such a good example to us of, Lord, even though I want to have everyone like me and have everyone's approval, I'm, I, I desire more for you to have your will completed through me because mm -hmm. Noah was able to see from a different perspective. We kind of just look at the tree in front of us. Noah mm -hmm. had this ability to kind of see the entire forest and to know that all these thousands of years later, we'd be talking about it today because it's not about Noah. This, is, this isn't about Noah. This is about God's mercy. This is about God's justice. This is about God's goodness, that it's not about our skill or our or our, our abilities or our talent or, you know, killing it for whatever we can do good. I, killing it for the kingdom is what mm -hmm. we tend to do a lot yeah. of times, too. It's not even about that. It's about it's about this posture of rest. Noah's name meant rest. I think that is so funny. God is so funny. And that he's letting us know what it's not his name. It's his identity. He had a posture of continual rest with his father while building. Yeah. The his... irony in that I laughed when you said that on Monday, that his name is rest. And mm -hmm. I'm like, the guy worked. That's right. The guy worked <laughs> his whole life. Yeah. I mean, is yeah. there a bigger task? Right. That anyone's ever had. That's right. I don't think so. That's right. And yet could he do that work in rest? Right. Amen. And that's that's the calling for our own, our own lives. Mm -hmm. The rest is an internal rest mm -hmm. of knowing who you are because you know whom you belong to. That's yeah. key. That's where the that's where the um, the comfort comes from. And I I when you guys are both talking, I'm thinking about this on the practical level in my life, just trusting trusting God. And I for a practical level. So my example would be. I texted you earlier in the week and said, Joy, have you ever seen the connection of, of um, 
Noah, Noah and the, Noah's Ark and the Ark of the Covenant and Jesus. And so that's what God whispered to me. What night was that? Maybe Tuesday. I then like, no, that tell was, me more in Marlo. Well, that was the arena that I was <laughs> right. like, oh, then life got really busy yesterday. Beautiful, yep. beautiful event in my daughter's school. No time. So I got home last night and I was sitting there and then the, the word door, the word just, it was just whispered in my spirit door. And then I just kept unpacking it. And I realized he gave me all of this. He just gave me all of these notions that I want to share. But then I had all these papers all over the place. And I went up to my writing table this morning, opened the window, listened to the rain. And, and I just said, God, I'm going to rest in you right now mm -hmm. because I, mm -hmm. as a human do not know how mm -hmm. I'm going to pull these thoughts mm -hmm. together, but just sitting, we talked about Sabbath not long ago, mm -hmm. just sitting and resting in him, hearing the rain, which is so beautifully metaphorical with Noah and just <laughs> unpacking right. what he gave me all of these notions about doors. And I say, God, I surrender this. I give mm -hmm. this to you. So it just that, that correlation with him building people don't, maybe people didn't understand and just resting and, and being obedient mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I wanted to also speak a word of encouragement to anybody because I feel like I represent the people maybe who <laughs> just would maybe look at the Bible and say, I do not understand. And that's mm -hmm. what, you were talking about, there was a word you used, I can't think of it, um, but revealing who he is. The Bible used to seem very intimidating to me. Mm -hmm. And just, I was telling you, Joy, that last night I was sitting there and I normally would open the Bible and just close and go, I don't know what it is. I kept studying just the one word door. He gave me that word. And then I kept studying and then seeing another thing and then flipping to this and flipping to another section. He reveals his story. Mm -hmm. And I, I would have never, I would have never seen that in a million years, uh -uh. me doing that, me, the most <laughs> unlikely. So I want to encourage any of you that, that don't know the Bible. I said to my husband, David, this morning, I said, I, what is happening to me? What? And I'm becoming a hashtag Bible nerd. I, <laughs> just FYI. But I do, yes, I just want to encourage you guys because I do represent, I, I, I so long ago said, how, how me? And maybe Noah felt the same way, but it's just, he just reveals his truth and it, it just becomes so practical mm -hmm. uh, in your life. And you see, like you said, the weave yeah. throughout the Bible. It's just woven. And I keep referring to the Bible as an escape room because you see this one little notion and then it, it's a, and then you might ignore it. And then you go back to it and you unpack it and you kind of solve the, the mystery and you go, oh, that relates over here. Oh, my gosh, that's over here. So it's beautiful. But the one word is rest. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to that because. My example, my practical example is I would have never been able to do this with the craziness of last night sitting down at like 930 or 10 I couldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. our, our, you know, the weariness. He says, come to us when you're weary. He gives us rest. He gives us the tools. He gives us the power. He gives us all of it mm -hmm. if we just sit and rest in him. Mm -hmm. So all that to say that. I love that. And I, just to stay on the pasture of rest, mm -hmm. because I mean, who doesn't want it, correct? Right. And the freedom that comes from rest mm -hmm. and the miracle working that comes from rest and the chain breaking that comes from rest. Mm -hmm. And I longed for that my whole life. And I'm sure there's many of you that are longing for that too, this internal this internal rest. And when I look at Noah, the, because again, I'm going to go back to what I can't get my heart off of because I'm in Deuteronomy in my own private reading. And what I see God continuously warning his people before they walk into the promised land, warning all of you, warning us, do not be afraid of the people. It's over and over and over again. Do not fear them. I got you. I got your back. I'm with you. I'm defending you. In fact, he's like, I'm going to go before you like this, like this roaring fire that's going to devour your enemy. Like, mm -hmm. I've got you. Don't let them intimidate. Right. Don't let the enemy intimidate you. And Noah knew this because there was this enemy force around him that was ridiculing him oh, yeah. and speaking and trying to intimidate him to stop doing what made no sense to them. Right. And that's why God is calling a remnant right now in this culture that we're living in. Are you willing to stand up against culture and say, no, that's wrong. No, that's not right. God's given me a blueprint for my life and I've got to build it. I cannot be one degree off. I know I can add some and I can subtract some, but I'm going to sink. If he was off just a slight bit in that boat, mm -hmm. the boat would have sunk. Mm -hmm. If he would have just listened to his next door neighbor, like maybe just alter it here. Maybe don't be so, you know, mm -hmm. he would have all, he, they've all would have sunk, including his family. And so I just want to, I'm just honoring Noah because I'm learning from Noah and it's not because of mm -hmm. Noah's skill. It was because of Noah's walk. And so what was different about Noah? Noah lived, loved. The opposite of faith 
is not fear. And the opposite of fear is not faith. The opposite of fear is love. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have faith until you know that you're forgiven, you have forgiven yourself, and you have received God's love, period. Mm -hmm. That's why it all goes back to the elementary. You learned everything mm -hmm. in kindergarten. Well, you learned everything in Genesis. You learned everything in, in this, 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 this subject of love. Mm -hmm. And when you finally can grab hold of experiencing and tasting the goodness of his love that you did not deserve, in fact, you deserved the opposite, then and only then can we have these roots of faith because faith is a fruit. Faith is a byproduct. It's God says in, in Hebrews 12, 2, I believe it says that he's the author and perfecter of the faith. I'm not the author of my faith. He is. He's mm -hmm. just asking us, will you receive my love? Mm -hmm. Will you grab hold of it today? Mm -hmm. And this is what I see in Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah walked love. Why is that? Because Noah walked with his lover of his soul every day. Mm -hmm. So he, he would walk with him and he would probably cry because if God's heart breaks, and he's, we're image bearers of God, our heart is going to break. Mm -hmm. So when you refuse to let your heart be broken because you got this, you're strong enough, we're not, you're not actually doing what it is that God's commissioned you to do. We are image bearers. It's okay for your heart to be broken. But what, Mo, but what Noah did is he walked daily with him and gave God his broken heart and gave God the rejection and gave God the betrayal and gave God the, why are you doing this to me? And gave God the questions and gave God his sins and gave God his mistakes because he was far from perfect. But he knew when he walked with a father who wrapped his arms around him every day saying, I got a call on your life. Do not be afraid of the people. This isn't even about you right now, Noah. This is I'm going to make you so selfless that this is going to be about the generations that follow you for thousands of years. And I'm thinking to myself, do I live like that? I'm so consumed with me today and my family today. I'm not even sometimes thinking about the third, fourth, fifth. This is 10 generations um, past Adam. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even thinking about the generations that passed, but Noah is. He's thinking about us when he decides to build the, the ark. It's okay, you don't like me. It hurts, it stings, but I've got a call on my life that's gonna leave a God's fingerprint on this world. I'm gonna do it because I'm walking with him and I'm talking with him and I'm hearing from him and I'm living love and there's a fullness about me and there's a holiness that he's given to me and it's worth it. And I just, I wanna give that word out and I'm, preaching to myself mm -hmm. because I'm in that right now. I tend to have this fear mm -hmm. of man and fear of people. And I want y'all to like me and I don't want there to be emails that don't like me. And I don't want, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when I get back into my father's time with him and I'm mm -hmm. walking with him and I see just like your eyes right now, I just see his tenderness of his eyes staring at me. It's like, man, that love, that love, I'm not going to sell my soul in order to gain the whole world. Father, I want you to be my whole world. And so I'm going to do what it is that you've commissioned me to do. And even if you will iron out the details of everything else around me, mm -hmm. even if someone's talking about me behind my back, or mm -hmm. even if my marriage is, is getting worse because I'm following my Jesus. Father, I know because I know you and your character now that you're going to work things out with my spouse, with my friend, with my family, with that coworker. You're going to iron out the details. I don't have to do it anymore. I just got to walk with you and talk with you and, mm -hmm. let, it, and let you do what it is only you can mm -hmm. do. And so, obey. I'm sorry. Yes. Go, go, go. And and obey and trust what you tell me. And when I when you're talking, I'm thinking about the beauty in the process, because it says that God was patient while Noah was building the ark. Mm -hmm. And so God could have God could have created a way. He could have taken them up onto a mountaintop and flooded it all, That's right. except for the mountaintop. Hmm. But he didn't do it that yeah, way. Nope. He could have provided an mm -hmm. ark, poof, ark, and, right. you know, I mean, whatever he wants right. to do. But for some reason, mm -hmm. he knows the beauty in the process. Mm -hmm. He knows the value in the experience. Mm -hmm. And man, we want to run from and avoid that. I don't want to build an ark for 120 years. Mm -hmm. But there... Why, you know, why did he do that? Because there's, there's got to be, you know, it does, it, it probably did something in Noah, I'll tell you that, and the family. Yeah. And God's after relationship. Yeah. That's why he did that. That's building this relationship between him and his son, Noah. Yes. Yeah. I feel like I'm playing jump rope and you guys are just like, and I just want <laughs> jump in. Okay. I'm like this. I was, listen, I was good at that too. Were you? Oh, I was, oh, I was terrible. My foot got caught. <laughs> 
I was, you guys are swinging the rope and I'm like, I'm coming in. Come on in, Marlo. Me and my Bible. The double Dutch. Double Dutch. <laughs> I can see Who else is going to hold the rope? Oh my gosh. My brain is, my brain is firing. I'm like, ting, ting, Listen, ting, ting. I could do it on roller skates. <laughs> double Dutch roller skates. Oh, wow. You too. No, you have a, you have a roller skate planter. You showed us the other day. Okay. Back to what you said about um, construction. Yes. I, I love that. Um, the, the, I love this is this one talking about all the, the weave, the weave, the weave in the Bible is the Ark and the Ark of the Covenant is that the, the exact dimensions he gave the now. Yes, I was is. joking again with David, I'm like, you know, me, I don't like directions, but how cool is it that he gave the exact directions? And I think there's so much more if we dive into that. Mm -hmm. How cool that he gives their exact dimensions, yep. and it's just like the Bible, they are the exact dimensions. There, that's the word, it's exact, it's exactly what to do, how to construct our lives. Lives. And a little personal note is that my my moment with Jesus sitting in my garage was not only with Nemo, but it was with a <laughs> set of boxes. And one of the funny little things I couldn't help but see is that the exact instructions, unlike an Ikea set of instructions, because I it's all pictures. Yeah. But back to that, that picture analogy, when I was sitting in my garage, I looked at this box and the only instruction I saw on the outside of the Home Depot box was, a, was um, saying, do not, it was an illustration of do not carry this alone. That's what, that was where my faith journey began was the Nemo, but that moment saying do not, and I was already ugly crying and going, I get that. I feel that. So for any of you that need to see and feel that yeah. illustration, do not carry that alone. That is what he wants for us. And he will Amen. illustrate it in any way that he can. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you were talking about love and I wrote, oh good. That's not another tab okay. that I would need later. <laughs> I wrote mutual love. Mm. I wrote there's a mutual love that is illustrated, even mm. though Noah ultimately ended up, you know, he was in, we were all imperfect. But I wrote, I see you. It's a mutual love. They, they see each other. Oh, no. Glasses. OK, so in Genesis 8, 1, it says, uh, well, at the end of seven, it says the water flooded the earth for 150 days. And then um, 8, 1, first two words. But God, first of all, we love that phrase, but God, but it also, it says, but God remembered Noah and it goes on to say so much more, but it's the, that he remembered Noah. But then I drew a big line over to um, 820 where it says, then after Noah, um, after, after Noah got off the, off of the boat, he, then Noah built an altar. And I just thought that was even after, so yeah. even at this mutual love, like mm -hmm. God is saying, you know, he remembered, it's saying God remembered Noah, but then it's saying mm -hmm. when he, after the hardship, after the hard stuff, after the obedience, then I circled then, yeah. then Noah built an altar. That's so good, Marlo. Even after hardship, um, even I, I know, I mean, we pray, we, sometimes we pray like, you know, I know for me in my life, that's why I start with gratitude now, because I used to pray like, God and my prayers were a vending machine. You pray and push the button and hopefully what right. you want will come yeah. out. Or, you know, you, you know, you drive by a police officer, like, was I speeding? You're praying, God, <laughs> God, please, you know, in that moment, <laughs> I still or just do that. <laughs> God, please let there be the right samples at Costco, pray or, or, or serious <laughs> prayers or whatever they are. I haven't read about that one, but <laughs> no, I'm going to start. Please, please don't let them just be, uh, you know, dishwasher pods. But um, <laughs> I don't want the carrot sticks. Like please. I want the donut. Yeah. How about a queso dip? But we pray for what we want and we pray when we're in need. But um, Noah worshiped him. He praised him even after the hardship, yeah. even after the hardship. And I have had to ask myself that, do I, and I, I am making it more and more. I prayed with my husband this morning. There's many trials in our days. You know, we're all flying around trying to live our lives. There's many trials every day and praising him mm -hmm. after the trial. And he built an altar. That was the first altar that was ever built. And I just mm -hmm. think that it is so beautiful that he built an altar to worship him. Mm -hmm. And then that led to, that's what I mean, flipping around my Bible. Who, me, what? <laughs> to Luke 17, 11 through 9. Just the story of the lepers, one out of 10, mm -hmm. only one of the lepers went back and praised him. And I thought wow. that was so beautiful that, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, all, all of all of, no, all of what we're good. saying coming together, but just going, making sure to go back and praise to when we're, when we're praying to pray with, um, wow. trusting his will, of course. I mean, that it's trusting his mm -hmm. will first and foremost, but also um, going back and praying, giving him praise after. And you know what? 
regardless of the result, which which is That's an so obedience good. in itself. Can, well. I, can I just share on top of that what you're saying? Because I think I love I love how God starts to put a spin on these yeah. studies mm -hmm. that we don't even know we're going to talk about. But I just really want us to make sure we don't negate or even forget or not hear what it is that you just shared, Marla, because I think it's so important that after God did the rescuing, after the lepers were healed, one came back and praised him and thanked him. One remembered it was not their own good works. It wasn't their own righteousness. It wasn't their own skill that got them healed, that got them um, on dry land, <clears throat> it was God himself. And so I'm reading in Deuteronomy mm -hmm. where he says in Deuteronomy 9, it says, after the Lord your God has driven you out of this, out of, out of your slavery, do not say to yourself, the Lord has brought me here to take possession of the land because of my own righteousness. No, it's not because of your own righteousness. It's because of me. I drove them out. I, I, I did this. And, and he goes on to say, like, just, just make sure you remember it was me that did this. Praise me. Remember me. Think about me when you've got wells that you don't have to dig, when you've got pantries that are filled with food that you didn't have to grow. Remember me when um, when you have this abundance, when the blessings are coming your way. And this is what Noah did. And this is, again, this is a byproduct of, of walking loved. When you walked love, you recognize it's not because of your own. It's almost like the woman that came through the Simon's house, the Pharisee, to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. And she finally gets to Jesus. She breaks open her alabaster jar. It's like mm -hmm. a, it's just a representation of she's breaking open um, that which was her past. She's giving it over to God. She doesn't want to live like this anymore. She was a prostitute. And she she's like she's weeping and she's bringing down her hair and she's wiping off his feet because she recognizes it's his feet that is the messenger to give hope to the world. She's preparing him for what's about to come. And he looks to her and she says, because you've been forgiven much, he says it to Simon, actually, because she's been forgiven much, uh, she loves much. She's been able to receive my love. Therefore, mm -hmm. she's able to love in return. And that's the thing with Noah is that because he walked with God, we don't get to hear the conversations, but it's the same. It's a mere reflection. This woman gave God everything, all her defaults, all her defects, all her sins, all her habits, all her addictions, all her hangups, all her feelings of unworthiness, all the enemy's lies. She gave it all. And therefore God was able to just lavish her. Like she's like, I'm walking around forgiven. I'm walking around completely loved. But Simon, the Pharisee, he's like, I don't, I don't have any, I'm good. I don't have to give you all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, I, I did this on my own righteousness. Mm -hmm. I did this because I'm, I'm a good person. I did this because of my good deeds. Mm -hmm. I don't have to show you, you know, and so he wouldn't have gotten off this boat and worshiped and bowed down to God. But the woman with the alabaster jar, that's what she did. She bowed down. That's what She made her own altar at Jesus' feet, just mm -hmm. like Noah. With what she had, too. I know you with were talking, yes, with what she had. And that was, yes. Yeah. Love. Love. Oh, mm -hmm. love it. Oh, I didn't know you were going to no, say please. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, I'd I'm love to hear more about your door. Yeah, you more. switching. I was just looking for the... Um, where it is. I didn't put it here. Okay, so th that's what happened last night. So when I got home last night, I was planning on unpacking the, the correlations between the, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark, and Jesus. But then he said door. And you said, I haven't seen Monday. You said you, you talked about a door. Briefly. Well, then it yeah. all makes sense. So um, he gave me he gave me doors. And I um, I was just looking for it here in the Bible. But first of all, you, we, were, we were answering the question, who are you, God, and what are you like? And there are all of these notes on doors, and it, really what it is, it's an invitation. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to take a step back and say that ark, when you think about the construction, there were no oars. No. So it was total trust yeah. in the navigation, and that is the equivalent in our life. We are trusting God to steer our boat. Will our boat sink? Hmm. We we it will he will he will steer our boat for us. But mm -hmm. I have a lot. This would take a lot of unpacking, but I'm just going to share it, uh, an overview of what he gave me about doors. The the similarity between the ark. First of all, um, in the ark, he says the word come, come to me. In Genesis, there it is. Genesis 7, 1. I just didn't circle it. It says, come to me. So what I love about that is that it's, and, and that's in uh, older translations, come to me. So it's like God is in the boat saying, come in. And then in 8.15, uh, he says, come out of the boat. So I wrote the word gentleman. I see God as just this gentleman who is holding the door for us, but he's mm -hmm. also in those places. He's in the boat holding the door saying, come. Mm -hmm. 
And then he's on the outside of the boat saying, come with your with your your new salvation, your 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 new beginning, come mm -hmm. into this and, and having full faith in that. But then in the tomb, Jesus walked out of one, there's only one way out through the door, through the wow. through the in Acts 16, 26. Um, it says there was an earthquake, prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. So there's another reference yeah. to doors there. Uh, the veil it talks about the veil in Hebrews. And we were talking, the veil tore open after Jesus mm -hmm. died. It was an entryway. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was the way through. If mm -hmm. we And I, would, I texted you the other night too. Do you see all these correlations with all of these veils mm -hmm. in creation? The veil of trees, the veil in the temple, the veil tore open. That I see that as such a great weave. That is not... That is not an accident. No. When Jesus died, the veil tore open. It was a doorway hmm. to all that is offered because of his, his death. Um, hmm. Jesus um, saying, where is that? I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. The doorway he is, is the door. The he is the door, the door. Yep. through Jesus. Um, hmm. And then uh, in Revelation, again, it's Revelation 22, 17. It's, a, it's the final invitation. So all of these all of these door references, I just thought were so beautiful. But it, it also goes back just to the simple fact of what are you like, God? Who mm -hmm. are you and what are you like? He mm -hmm. holds the door for us. Mm -hmm. He is waiting that he is the answer. He is mm -hmm. the way walking through. So I just I loved I loved. And that's what I that's what I kept referencing sitting there last night going, mm -hmm. this is how am I, how is this possible that I am able to see all of this? Mm -hmm. It's like a childlike faith. Mm -hmm. And I, I represent that. I love that because <laughs> represent. It, yes. And you just see more and more and more about who he is and the love that he mm -hmm. has for us. Well, and I think it gives us references. so much um, rest in the fact of, of God being the one who opens the door and he also closes the door. Yeah. And there's a verse of revelation. It's in my notes somewhere, but it, it says that what door God closes, no man can open and what, Mm -hmm. What God opens, no man can close. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in my life, and I don't know about you all, but I try to bust down some doors. I try to make some things happen. Oh, yeah. Right. I try to I try to put that round peg in that square yeah, you know, sure. type all of thing. Time. And, and oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go, go. I thought I'm sorry. No, I was just so I was just referring to what you're just adding to what you're sharing is that we're finding in the story with Noah um, that God is the one that shut the door, as we talked about on Monday briefly. God's the one that shut the door, and also God is the one who opened the door mm -hmm. because it was for all, about three months that they had landed, mm -hmm. right? Noah, yeah. Noah and his family, the storm was over, and yet because Noah was in a rest posture, in a Sabbath, continuous Sabbath posture, walking with God, listening to God, having intimacy with God, living loved with God, he didn't dare get out of that boat on his own doing because everything externally looked like it was time. Mm -hmm. And so many times I have done that and I have found myself falling because I went too soon before God said it's time to go. Mm -hmm. So I do not go with your mm -hmm. own understanding or what your eyes uh, uh, on the external can see. You wait to hear from me. But God, look, it's time. It's ready. If I don't do it now, I'm going to miss I'm going to miss the boat. I'm going to miss my opportunity. You know, it's going to go. But you haven't gotten the peace from me yet, Joy. Mm -hmm. Wait. And Noah... He waited, waiting for the dove. Yeah, until that mm -hmm. dove. There's no. This is where like, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the olive dove branch, represents the, dove, the yeah. Holy Spirit. The olive branch. Jesus, right, has his Garden of Gethsemane in the olive press. The mm -hmm. olive oil represents so much, and he waits for that to come to him, and then he goes out and he does this time, this this, this posture of of worship, mm -hmm. out of the one. The one door. The temple had one door. The mm -hmm. tabernacle had mm -hmm. one door. Jesus yeah. says, I am the only door. Passover of the door. Jesus mm -hmm. is on the cross. He is the door to freedom. You know, you're right. There's so yeah. much uh, so truth much. to, to, mm -hmm. to this door mm -hmm. and waiting. Can you imagine the, just the obedience and the waiting? They, they landed now waiting. I mean, seriously, they, they were on yeah. that ark for a lot. It was animals. stinky. The animals. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm. They were hungry and it was stinky. Yes. Oh my goodness. But uh, he didn't dare move until God right. said go. He yeah. Was, yeah. There was a few more. Isaiah 50, 55, 3. Isaiah 55, 3. Come to me and listen. Um, listen carefully. If you accept my teaching, you will have new life. And again, once going through all these doors, it's a representation of new life, yeah. the tomb, the veil, 
the ark, so it's good. it's new life. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew eleven twenty eight, come to me, which speaks to my heart. I'm sure a lot of us. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come to me, all of you who are tired, you have worked hard, who carry heavy things, come to me and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. And then in don't John, lift it alone. Mm -mm, don't mm. lift it alone. <laughs> and I was tired in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like in a practical way, I was tired and weary mm -hmm. and just crying. I didn't even know. I, I didn't know Jesus at all. I was just out there angry and sad and confused because mm -hmm. I was like the Laverne and Shirley song doing it my way. No, <laughs> no, no, um, no knowledge. Terry, I, I know I want to sing, but I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm serious. So, but then I was doing it my way. <laughs> We're good girl. I'm hearing it, but I won't. Yeah. Sing it. I do have a song that he gave me. So I'm going to share that. Thing. But John 10, seven. <laughs> now this, I love John 10, seven. I am like a gate for the sheep. Now, I love this because it's like a parent repeating it. Like we say to our kids, <laughs> I'm going to tell you one more time okay. in 10, nine in John 10, nine, he says again, I am the gate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking it just is the way my brain works. I don't think of llamas with their legs crossed reading permed, the paper permed with permed hair, but, but I <laughs> think, dollars. but as you're talking and I, and I think about the door, I think about um, maybe the other side of the coin. It's just the way that my brain thinks <laughs> and that he knocks at the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he is the door. Mm -hmm. And for Noah, he opened and shut the door, mm -hmm. the provision, mm -hmm. the safety, and that is true. Yeah. And in this instance, he's knocking at the door and we're presented with the opportunity to open the door or yeah. not open the door. Yeah. And so while many doors and we pray that God will shut doors because mm -hmm. we don't want to be walking where we don't need to be walking yeah. and that he'll open doors. You know, we pray that and believe that he will lead us and guide us in that. Um, and yet, you know, some doors it's, we get to choose mm -hmm. and that gets, you know, that kind of links it together for me with the obedience part. Yes. I'm glad you're landing there. So it, you know, it, it gets back to the part that we play. Um, I love his sovereignty. I love his provision. Um, and when I look at the question again, I kind of get back to why Noah Noah was a person who opened the door. Noah had fellowship with God. They were in conversation because it says, um, I'm trying to think of where it said, well, well, it said, you know, they, they had dialogue. Yeah. Right. So they had close fellowship, fellowship. And, and God said to Noah, so they were talking. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't like this mystical, uh, unknown thing. Yeah. It was this thing he was familiar with and had been doing, mm -hmm. you know, much like David who had had fellowship, you know, this, the hardship and the journey had prepared him for, you know, many things in his future, but he knew him, he followed him. Mm -hmm. And I heard an illustration this week about, um, you know, when shepherds, I, you know, I love, you know, the song that talks about he'll leave the 99. And so for many of us, we, we are the one that he goes after. Mm -hmm. um, but I was the one and he went after me, but I don't want to keep being the one <laughs> that he has to keep going after. And the story that I heard is that, um, Oftentimes shepherds will, you know, pick an apple or they'll pick fruit when they're out in the field mm -hmm. and they'll just put it in their pouch and that occasionally they'll just kind of put it behind them mm -hmm. and the sheep that's the closest to them gets the apple. <laughs> and I don't know about y'all, but I, that's where I want to be. Yeah. Is I, that's the, my heart is that I want to be able to, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I want to be able to obey like, no, I want to be able to build an ark if that's what he's calling me to. Yeah. And it may, you know, sometimes the physical thing that we do, the monstrosity of that job 
just seems so much bigger than anything we could be called to do. But right. sometimes an emotional or a sacrifice or a obedience, mm -hmm. like with regards to relationships mm -hmm. and people and mm -hmm. uh, maybe money mm -hmm. and, you know, those things, that's, they can be pretty, you know, monstrosorous mm -hmm. is too, mm -hmm. if that's the right word. And I, I just want, I just, my heart posture is I'm just, I'm just running because I want to be right behind them when the apples come in. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's who Noah was for me. He was the one that was in fellowship, trusting God, in communion. And I loved it, Joy, that you said on Monday, it's not based on talent. It's based on walk. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's good news for me. Amen. That's good news for that's good news for all of us. Right There you go. Because we all have access he is knocking at the heart of every one of our door. Amen. And he continues to knock at the heart of our door. And we open it once in salvation, mm -hmm. and yet he continues to pursue us mm -hmm. and give our give us opportunity to choose him mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And we get the choice to choose. And there are days I don't. Right. There are days I choose comfort and entertainment <laughs> and laziness or selfishness. And there are days that I just hunker down right in that. Right. But you know what? Then when I go to bed, he's knocking on the door. Yeah. When I wake up, he's knocking on the door. Yeah. Amen. And he's so gracious and good to always do that. My feelings about knocking can best be described by a song by Tony Orlando and Don. Because <laughs> that song, I used to see God in that because it says, knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. And I know I was studying a lot about the actually the roofs of the, 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 um, the temple or the Ark of the Covenant and, and the Ark, but the, not three times on the ceiling. If you want me twice on the pipes, if you're not going to show and just speaking to that, I was always the two times. Not, I'm not showing. I, mm. that's why I really have such a heart for anybody that feels like you're, mm. you want to stiff arm God because I was there. And I, the transformation in my life, I'm I now I'm, I'm opening the door. He'll, I know I, he is knocking. Yeah. He is re, a relentless pursuit of us goes back to who are you, God? Mm -hmm. He is a relentless pursuit. And if you feel like you are tending to shun God, yeah. he is knocking, he's knocking and mm -hmm. to, we can answer the door and he is there. Uh, oh my gosh. I can't believe how fast I love, this it. Time I love it. You said that, Marla. I want to share I, one thing before we do close um, on obedience, because one of the things that I struggled with, if you could just stay for a moment, one of the things I struggled with with obedience <clears throat> was trying to be obedient and yet not knowing how deeply I was loved. And when you are trying to walk in obedience without first experiencing the the, the unfathomableness, if that's a word, of, of God's love for you, undeservingly so, it ends up becoming religion in disguise. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if you, you, if you have yeah. obedience without surrender, it's religion in disguise. And so... First and foremost, that's really why I wrote the book Falling North mm -hmm. in the first place is mm -hmm. because I kept trying to trust and obey and, mm -hmm. and kept letting the shame like I can't even do that. I can't even obey God. I can't right. even. And so God was like, I don't even, don't even right now. That's not even about that. Mm -hmm. Right now it's about joy. You getting back to the basics of do you receive my love? Mm -hmm. Will you receive my love? Will you, like mm -hmm. you started off, Marla, will you, will you forgive yourself? Because I have forgiven you. I have washed you clean. And so Noah's life reveals because he was a man that lived loved, the natural byproduct, the natural outpouring, the natural desire of his heart was wanting to obey the one who has loved him when he deserves it the least. Mm -hmm. And when you receive this kind of crazy love, forgiveness over the very thing that I should die for, the very thing that I should be condemned for, for the rest of my life. And he unhesitantly washes you and places this white robe on you. You have a desire. This thing that I tried to do for so long, right. white knuckling obedience, so I could just do it right. All of a sudden, it just became a natural desire to want to obey yes. because I was receiving this love from him. Is that yeah, making sense? It makes a lot of sense. Because when I think of when I think of the sheep that's right behind him, is the sheep behind him there because they're afraid? Mm -hmm. And if that's the that's not what I'm talking about. That's right. So I'm glad that you said it in a whole no, other way. Yeah. Yeah. Because because you when you know him and you know he's got fruit and you know he's good and he's loving and he will take care of you. You want to get close to him. Right. But but there have been times when I fought to get to the front of the line yeah. 
from other sheep because <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> I, I, because I got to be there because that looks good. Yeah. Or I got to be there because I'm afraid there's a cliff and I'm responding from fear. Yeah. And God's not given us a spirit of fear, That's right. but of power and love and a sound mind. So it's, it's, it's his kindness, his love that draws us to him, that enables us to even have a desire right. to obey. Right. I love that. And so Noah, when we look at Noah, it's like, oh, Noah's a man of obedience. And that's what I keep hearing. That's like the main thing. But let's get to the root of the obedience. Mm -hmm. No, Noah was a man who was mm -hmm. loved, who walked loved, yes. period. And therefore, that. yes, therefore he was able to naturally walk in obedience, yes. knowing that he would yeah. ultimately stumble. That's right. I mean, that's, that's us. That's me. That's all this. Mm -hmm. I do have a quick, a, a song. Yes, that, please. He put it on the heart in oh, the beginning of the week. Now. We all got time for a song. He put it on the heart at the beginning of the week. And I went, <laughs> no, no, no. And then uh, I turned it on this morning and I'm just, I'm just bebuffing around going, oh my I gosh, I did it. And you know what? I realized it goes what? back to what I was saying about Mrs. Noah, whatever <laughs> Mrs. her name Noah. might be. I don't know what her name is. Let's hear it. This song Siri, play Rock the Boat by Hughes Corporation. Listen to these words. I don't know if I know. This. Oh, you know it. Oh, my okay. gosh. First line. Sing his it. wife had to say, so I'd like to know where you got the notion. <laughs> Saying to her husband, Noah, I'd like to know where you got the notion. He's trusting in God. And um, it says, uh, ever since our voyage, our, our, this says this, ever since our voyage of love began, your touch has thrilled me like the rush of the wind. He touches our lives and it just breathes life into us. It's just, it, it thrills me. I know it does that. And your arms have held me safe from the rolling sea, right? He hovers uh -huh. over the waters. There's always been a quiet place to harbor you and me. That's what we were talking it about is. is the Sabbath sitting. We don't know what we're doing. Just sit in, in that harboring place with just you and him. Mm -hmm. And then this, I love this. Okay. I just, okay, I just picture the animals, like the hippos, mm -hmm. their bottom just, and some, mm -hmm. some, some animals playing the trombone. Somebody's mm -hmm. on the, somebody's on the bongos, but this yeah, part, it I, says, our I love is like, a ship. our love is like a ship on the ocean. We've been sailing with the cargo full of, Love and devotion. Girl, kick it with the heart. Oh, heart my my yes. <laughs> Our love is like a ship on the ocean. We've been sailing with a cargo full of love and what? Devotion. devotion, obedience. Oh, I need to have the strength that flows from you. Don't let me drift away. When love, mutual love between him and Noah can see me through. Come on, Marlo. I, which animal will be playing the trombone? I don't know, but when you listen to that song, you'll never, I'll never hear it in the same never. way. He's got it, you know, cause you're that on the uh, the ark that long. You, They had to have formed a choir, a band, of course. something. I wonder what the name was. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, but gosh. I just okay, so I could get dark with the name. Every Wednesday, I've got like <laughs> songs in my head that I cannot get out. This is going to be my song today. I'm not be able You've got to gotta listen to it. Just pick, picture I every. I, I I do I do. I said to Rock David, I picture. I know I picture the hippos walking off the boat, and their 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 bottoms are just going back oh, and forth, song. and they're like. Our love is, you know, it just just singing the words. We've been sailing. We, they're, they're looking at each other singing. We've been sailing with the cargo full of <laughs> love and devotion. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is so oh, fun. There you go. You didn't. I I love it. I see it, girl. <laughs> I totally see it. <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> How do we go into prayer after that? It's it's so good. Speaking love of that, it. would you mind praying? I love it. Yes, <laughs> Lord. Thank you for all the ways. Lord, thank you for the woman that walked up to me last night that, that said she she tunes in and um, that that what we were saying that day about being the way that God made us as individuals that just spoke to her heart. So thank you right now for wherever wherever people are tuning in from, whenever that um, whatever you have shared uh, through we have shared with your word through us that it's going to touch whoever's heart it is supposed to touch. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this beautiful conversation about. Um, you being such a gentleman, you just loving us so tenderly, uh -huh. opening the door for us, a constant invitation to know that you are the way. So, so thankful. Uh -huh. Just praying for any person right now that I know I was mentioning earlier that may not know you, they just stumbled on this and said, I don't know. I just uh -huh. don't know. You know, and that's all that matters. You will carry us 
through any storm. And we are thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Thankful for your word, the truths, the, the beautiful little puzzles in the weaves mm -hmm. that we get to with obedience and surrender unpack and see all that you have waiting for us. It's like, well, it's like Amazon showing up at the door. There's something beautiful all the time or Christmas or whatever it is. I'm just so mm -hmm. thankful for the surprises that you have for us. We pray all this with um, such joy and reverence. We mm -hmm. pray all this in Jesus's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. ladies. Thank you, Lee. And you're welcome. You've got a song stuck in your head. I know. Blame, blame, Marlo. blame Marlo. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Yet, sorry. We'll be back here tomorrow with our special guest. You don't <laughs> want to miss it. See you tomorrow at Bye. nine.